from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Eleanor Oldroyd in London, still in the depths of the Northern Hemisphere winter, winter and getting severe envy for all of my friends who are jetting off around the world for, for different series. Some are going to New Zealand with the England men's test team. Uh, some are already in India with the Australian men's test team. And some are going to South Africa for the Women's T20 World Cup as well. But hey, I've got a train to Manchester later on today. So who needs international jet setting? I hope it all goes well, Ellie. It's very quiet here in Sydney. It's been boiling hot. We've had a massive storm. Cars have been washed off the street. But I don't think it's raining much in India, and that's where most of the Australian cricket eyes are focused at the moment. Well, it is raining in India for the Indian spinners. <laughs> They're picking it up by the buckets. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Charu Sharma for All India Radio. I'm glad to be back in Bangalore where I'm ODing on golf because uh, my club, the KG, has got a league going. And, oh, just this golf, golf, golf all the time. Well, it's lovely to have you all with us and um, I'm sure we'll be reflecting a lot on the Border Gavaska Trophy on weeks to come on Stumped, but we are kind of semi-watching that first innings as we record at the show this morning here in the UK. But first on Stumped, we're going to take a deep dive into the heart of the India dressing room. Well, it's not often you get a glimpse into the mind of top players like Virat Kohli and MS Dhoni, but our first guest worked alongside them every day. He spoke to them regularly and he was privy to high-level conversations, the details of which have never previously been reported. I'm delighted to say we're joined by the former India fielding coach, R. Shritar. Good morning. Hello, Shri. Welcome to Stumped. Good morning, Eleanor. Good morning, James. It's good evening for you. I'm sorry if you're in Sydney. And obviously, good afternoon to Charu on the show. And it's a pleasure to be, be to be here on BBC Stumped. You just released this book. It's called Coaching Beyond, My Days with the Indian National Cricket Team. I mean, congratulations on the book. It's made quite a stir already. What, what made you write it? What made you decide to write it? Oof. I don't know. I've been thinking about that. What made me write it? I think it was just a trigger at some point after I finished that I should uh, probably let the world know about uh, the seven years I was with the Indian team, what made this team fearless, what made that team in, in that duration, uh, five years back-to-back uh, -back number one test team uh, in the world. It was from 2016 to 20, India was the number one test team in the world. And what made the Kohli Shastri era tick and the kind of fearless and honest cricket which they played. Uh, of course, there didn't been a ICC trophy, but some of the cricket uh, we played at that time was quite exhilarating. So I thought it would be a good idea to let uh, let the readers or let the coaches, aspiring young cricketers, cricket fans, give them give them an anecdotal uh, uh, view of uh, how how uh, the whole thing went about and how the Kohli Shastri era instilled uh, instant fearlessness into the uh, Indian players and what champions of champions are made of. I thought it was an opportunity for me to communicate to upcoming coaches, upcoming cricketers, in a storytelling way. And it's made headlines around the world already, hasn't it? The book since you brought it out, particularly in India, not surprisingly, perhaps, because you've given us amazing detail into certain incidents which happened around that seven-year period. I mean, are you surprised by the reaction that it's had, by the the level of interest that it's had? Totally surprised. I never expected it. I just wanted it to be a, just a kind of a book, leave back something, you know. And I did not expect the kind of uh, uh, the, the interest the book has generated. Um, and I have a view to it. You know, obviously, uh, some of the interest uh, has uh, not gone down well, very well with me because what I intended to write and what has come out is totally different. <laughs> Because nowadays you see on social media people looking for instant, uh, instant, uh, uh, what do you saw, what do you say, instant greatness or instant fame. Don't read the entire book and don't understand the context of the book before uh, passing a judgment. Unfortunately, we live uh, in, in in this era, and it was an error of judgment from my side. I didn't take that into consideration. I just wrote it very honestly and fearlessly, like the culture of the Indian team when I was with the team, being honest and fearless. But I wrote it with a lot of passion, without berating anyone, without uh, uh, being disparaging to anyone. And uh, like I said, 
but people didn't re get the real context of it and certain things were written without reading the whole context which i am sad about but otherwise i'm very i'm i'm, I'm very glad that uh, like you said the book is uh, created and generated a lot of interest jim maxwell shri uh, just talking about your connection with the indian team you came aboard about the same time as ravi shastri did as uh, the coach tell us about working with him and the impact he had on the indian side i think it's been enormous because uh, my entire seven years obviously i had i had one year with anil as the as the head coach but the remaining six years has all it all been under ravi shastri who i think uh, has made a huge impact in my career in my coaching career at least and uh, the kind of uh, personality that he is the towering personality that ravi is and uh, is is in my opinion he's made a huge impact on the way uh the team uh, the team plays obviously ravi is a very very good tactician of the game uh, his decision making skills are are unbelievable and everyone knows as i mentioned in the book about his man management skills and his ability to get the best out of each one in in his own way but what stood out most and what i learned most by being beside ravi through those seven years is uh, integrity Ravi I think is a man of extreme integrity and another thing about him is no agenda absolutely no agenda in my opinion he was loyal to indian cricket and he was uh, always looking at which what is the best thing i can do to do, to get indian cricket ahead so that was a great learning from me for Ravi so most of this book is a tribute uh, to the kohli shastri era just a little bit more on his his style is method uh, apparently he wasn't uh, scared of raising his voice tell us about the time ms doni felt his wrath after he scored his uh, 10000th odi run against england at lords ravi shastri wanted indian team to play in a certain way and he made no bones about it. so he 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 didn't mind the team losing but he wanted a certain brand of cricket this indian team should play whether you win or lose and he was uh, fair and uh, to express that and other fact that stood out was he treated everyone the same as human beings we like one person more than the other but he treated everyone same in the team so that was a point i was trying to um, uh, impress in that particular incident and on the score of the, the famous ms dani uh, is is it true tell us a bit more about how you found out about his retirement before anyone else appeared to so i you know it was it was it was the second day of the semi final as i as i written it and i was at the breakfast table very early and uh, like i wrote uh, rishabh and ms joined in and since i was sitting alone they joined in and there was a conversation going on and i just heard that conversation about what i had written and when when ms said what he said i almost felt like jumping across the table and giving him a hug and you know falling at his feet for the kind of devotion he's got for this country him being um an, an army personnel from the para regiment i should say he, the devotion and the love he's got for his country shown through that day with that comment of what he said that uh, he did not want it want to miss that uh, bus journey in case we get to lords on that on that night he did not want to miss that bus journey because it could be his last and my respect for him only grew multifold once i heard that but i was so scared to even uh, speak about it to anyone i just zipped up and uh, went on with it and eventually he announced his retirement after a couple of years shri hi this is charu sharma from bangalore congratulations Thank on you. the book i look forward to reading it uh, and of course for all the good work you've done for the indian team especially with fielding standards but more than that later let's move on to his replacement kohli um, kohli that is and uh, he's an absolute superstar that we know but you know in terms of personality uh, very aggressive and a lot of people love that somebody does raise a bit of controversy in your opinion how was he in the dressing room as an individual look he to me was outstanding i mean whether he was just a player or right through the years he was a captain he's someone who who inspired everyone to give their best he walked the talk ravi brought the best out of him in my opinion uh and uh, he 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 brought out the fearlessness in virat you can see that by the way uh, the indian team toured australia uh, during uh, their during their uh, partnership the way india played in australia to me to me 
kind of exemplifies the the Kohli Shastri partnership, how fearless they were when they toured Australia. So I mean, Virat Kohli in the dressing room was someone who everybody looked up to. I mean, his work ethics was unbelievable. I always say that it's a it's a given template for any young cricketer to just see. And you you have a work ethic like that, and you can't you can't do too much wrong. You you won't be far away from achieving uh, your best your best self. That's the kind of template he had, you know. Whether it was practice, whether it was taking care of his diet, whether it was his training, whether it was his recovery, whether it, everything the kind of the kind of uh, dedication he had to uh, to everything uh, about his cricket was unbelievable. And whether he scores runs or not, the kind of energy he gave away on the field. And uh, was to me unbelievable. He didn't re- leave a drop of energy back on the field uh, when he came back uh, into the dressing room at half past five or whatever time that was. Unbelievable. To me, he's an ultimate example. Like I say, Kohli is just not a leader. In India, Kohli is a movement. <laughs> well said. How did the team, you, Ravi, and Kohli, and everybody, handle fielding lapses and missed catches? Was there a lot of criticism thereafter, or did you take it well? It's all right. It happens in the game. Surely not. I feel uh, uh, we, handled it very, we handled it very well because in international cricket, if you see, if you play five series on the trot, you're bound to have one one poor series on the field as a team. It's an average, and uh, it is it is a given. Like I say, like I say always in many of my fielding seminars or anywhere, you show me one fielder who's not dropped the catch, and I will show you God. So everyone, everyone, everyone makes mistakes on the field, but. Uh, we always tried and uh, help the players, all players, try and separate their primary skill from their fielding, which is always the secondary skill. We help them separate it mentally because sometimes you end up thinking about your primary skill even when you're fielding and that is when the concentration lapse happens. And it is human. It is going to happen to every athlete or every cricketer. But we help them try and separate that and we try and help the athletes be in the impact phase, help try cricketers be in the impact phase of fielding rather than be in the deficit phase. So help each cricketer try and identify those different phases while they are on the field and get into the impact phase whenever they realize that they are falling into a deficit phase. And uh, practice again, different conditions, different methods. You've got to keep it going. Being there for seven years, you've got to be inventive and creative and uh, keep the practice sessions uh, enjoyable and creative and interesting as well. So we try our best uh, we can. I don't know if we succeeded or not, but yeah, we try our best we can. So, Sri, when you look back on your time as India's fielding coach, what do you feel? I think I'm um, deeply in gratitude to Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli and MS Dhoni, BCCI, of course, for having the trust in me to allow me to uh, do my role for as long as seven years, close to 300 games. I would have given my right hand if somebody told me way back in 2015 that if you do seven years, uh, we'll need your right hand. I would have said, happily, please take it. So I'm deeply in gratitude to all of them. And uh, it was probably uh, a phase of life which gave me recognition. Today, if I'm on BBC, it's because of that phase, isn't it? I won't be on BBC otherwise. So <laughs> a deep sense of gratitude. Well, Sri, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Stumped and uh, very best of luck to you. It's been an absolute pleasure to be on BBC. Thank you very much, Eleanor. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, my good old friend, Charo. Wish you all the best. Right. And a pleasure to be on BBC. Thank you. Well, next on Stumped, when India play Pakistan, the world of cricket grinds to a halt. It's one of the most intense and fierce sporting rivalries in the world. And often it lives up to the billing. Well, this weekend, the two countries meet for their first game of the Women's T20 World Cup in South Africa. Earlier this week, I caught up with the Pakistan all-rounder, Nida Dar, and I asked what these matches meant to her. Definitely, it's a different uh, scenario whenever we play against India. And definitely with all uh, wishes from the country and from the family and the friends uh, for playing against India, it's different. And uh, definitely I hope for the best that we we girls are playing really well against them. And uh, yeah, before that, we had a match against India in Asia Cup and we won that. And definitely everyone is now wishes for the, for for again, the win. When you you won that game in the Asia Cup, what was the reaction like? Um, can you just sum up the excitement of beating India? 
Yeah, definitely. It was a great honor for me as well because I was the match winner at that time and uh, definitely we need the win at that moment. And uh, in, in the Asia Cup, it's a big event, you know. So the thing is, yeah, we were very excited for the, for the match and uh, uh, my, my mother was like always saying me, you need to uh, step up for, uh, against India and you need to, you know, perform well. And definitely af after the match, we actually won that uh, against India. So everyone cherishing us, everyone saying, yeah, this is, this is your time. Come on, girls, you can do it. So it was a really amazing feeling at that time. I'm sure you could, you could do with a win, couldn't you? You had quite a difficult series against uh, Australia this last month. Yeah, uh, yes, we, we have a very good practice matches and we had a very good practice against Australia. Definitely, we actually lost the matches, but the thing is we actually uh, experiment a lot of things against them and uh, we actually know how we can go with the new strategy and the plan. So, yeah, it is a very good, it is a very big event like World Cup. So definitely we should have step up and go for the win. Can you tell us about your new strategy or is this something you're keeping secret? <laughs> yeah, it is secret. <laughs> we'll show you in, in the matches. <laughs> you had some great performances in 2022 and you were named part of the ICC's T20 International Team of the Year. Um, the only Pakistan player to be in that group alongside some great players from Australia and around the world as well. What did that mean to you personally and to your family? Uh, definitely, it's a great honor for me uh, to be nominated as a, a cricketer of the year as well and uh, being in the T20s. So, yeah, definitely it's an honor. But the thing is, it's always boost me and give me that, uh, give me that challenge that you can do it more better for the team. And yes, uh, definitely it's it's not a tag for me, but uh, I don't want any pressure, <laughs> any extra pressure for the World Cup. But the thing is, I just want to deliver whatever I have. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Nida, thank you very much indeed for your time and very, very best of luck over thank the next you. few weeks. Thank you so much. Well, that was the Pakistan all-rounder Nida Dar and the Women's T20 World Cup gets underway in South Africa this weekend. Charu, thank you very much indeed. Jim, it's a pleasure as always to see you and that is just about it for this week's Stumped. Uh, join us again next time. From the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio, this is Stumped.